Good morning, everyone. I will now call to order the March 2nd, 2023 Clackamas County Board of Commissioners business meeting. Gary, would you please take the roll? Yes, Chair Smith. First, our staff support today, County Council Stephen Madcor, Clerk to the Board, Tony Mayernick. Commissioner West is out of the office today. Roll call. Commissioner Schull. Here. Commissioner Schrader. Here. Commissioner Savas. Present. Chair Smith. Here, I will now lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Good morning, everyone. We are holding this meeting in person and virtually. If you've joined us via Zoom for this meeting and are interested in providing public comment, we will prompt you uh, how to do that when the time is right. General public comment will be taken at the usual allotted time. I would like to remind all participants, including staff, all elected officials and members of the public that Robert's rules of order will be enforced in this business meeting. We welcome your opinions and look forward to your polite participation. Gary, can you introduce the first item? Yes, Chair. The first item is the Housing Authority of Clackamas County, if you would please convene as that board. I recess as a Board of County Commissioners and convene as the Housing Authority Board. Uh, Housing Commissioner Ann Lanestra appears is not online, so she is not able to join today. This is the Housing Authority of Clackamas County Consent Agenda. Tony, would you please read the Consent Agenda? Housing Authority Consent Agenda 1 item, approval to apply for an affordable housing construction grant from the City of Milwaukee for the Hillside Park Redevelopment Project. Anticipated grant value is $2 million. Funding is through City of Milwaukee construction excise tax. No county general funds are involved. Thank you, Tony. <clears throat> Does any commissioner wish to remove any item off the Housing Authority Consent Agenda? Uh, no chair, but after the vote, can I just say a few words? Yes, certainly. Okay, thank you. Okay. I'll entertain a motion. I move for approval of the Housing Authority Consent Agenda. Second. Commissioner Scholl has moved for the approval of the Housing Authority Consent Agenda. Commissioner Schrader has second the motion. I'll go ahead and call for a vote, and then commissioners can comment. Is that correct? Okay. Tony, go ahead. Commissioner Savas. Aye. Commissioner Schrader. Aye. Commissioner Scholl. Aye. Chair Smith. Aye. Motion passes 4-0. Commissioner Savas. Yeah. Um, thank you, Chair. Uh, so, colleagues, uh, this morning I learned that we've, between now and June, we have a lot of, um, uh, we're going to have a lot of meeting difficulties where we all won't be here. And I just want to confirm that, uh, for everyone's knowledge, that um, it takes four votes to pass something for the Housing Authority, not three. That's my recollection. So a quorum you know, and a vote, a positive vote, requires four, four votes. So I'm just kind of concerned that going forward for some of these important decisions that it's not a three, it's a four for the Housing Authority. I will ask to revisit this with you, Commissioner. I believe it is different. I believe they do have a floating quorum requirement, and we've discussed this in the past. Give me um, later today, and I can give you that that answer. Okay. Yeah. Because I, I, I remember the answer that I got before was you need four positive votes. I'm not sure who gave you that answer, but our answer will be consistent. Okay. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. And if so, we'll try to make sure Ann Leinstra is able to attend if there's an issue with that. And I wasn't, yeah, no, Chair, I wasn't directing that towards uh, Ms. Leinstra. Oh, I, I know just, you yeah, weren't, yeah. but it, in case if we happen to find ourselves in that situation, or we'll just have the housing consent agenda at another time. Thank you for that, Commissioner Savas. I will now adjourn as a housing authority board and reconvene as a board of county commissioners. Uh, next is a public hearing. It is a second reading of Ordinance 01-2023 an ordinance amending Clackamas County Code Chapter 6.03 emergency regulations and declaring an emergency. No fiscal impact, no county general funds are involved. Stephen Madcor, County Council will present. Thank you, Gary. Good morning, commissioners. We are here for a second reading of an ordinance. It is 012023, and it is an amendment to Chapter 603 emergency regulations of the county code. What we are proposing 
is a restoring the language that existed prior to August night or August 2022 when the board made some changes to the emergency ordinance and this would restore it to that language which had been in existence for 20 years prior and it basically eliminates the language that was prompted by events that occurred in 2022. The only thing that we're adding and asking to be kept is the severability clause, which basically states if a court finds any provision of the emergency declaration ordinance invalid, that it doesn't strike the entire chapter, it just strikes the offending provisions. That's very standard language, a severability clause, it's in contracts, it's in code. We're just asking that it be kept in this version of it. There is also a declaration of an emergency itself, meaning that it is effective immediately as upon signing or approval, as opposed to 90 days, which is the typical time frame of which ordinances are affected under county law. And we had the first reading on uh, February 16th, and it was passed, and here would be the second reading. It would be a public hearing to hear from the public, and I'm here to answer any questions that the board may have concerning any of these amendments. Thank you very much for that. Do the commissioners have any clarifying questions or comments? I am going to go ahead, and there will be another time to comment. I'm going to go ahead and open the public hearing on this. Is there anyone who would like to testify? And I see Shirley Morgan is in the audience. Madam, I do have your card. Would you like to come forward now and testify? Please introduce yourself, your area of residence, and you will have three minutes. Well, good morning, commissioners and staff. Good to see you always. Shirley Morgan from Welch's. Though I support this repeal, it's difficult to be appreciative, knowing the motives of those who voted for it. When elected commissioners, exasperated by unforeseen circumstances and non-intentional decisions made by the election officials, knowingly exceed their authority to intentionally with reckless indifference to consequences to all elected officials, create a weaponized ordinance giving them authority to define the criminal intent or conduct of elected officials. From my view, they have crossed the line. This action in itself is intentional malfeasance and willful wanton neglect because its intent was influential intimidation, leading to the monetary harm of an election official. It violated the authority of the voters. It outraged elected officials. It created a lack of trust for your leadership. It takes an extraordinary person to run for and dedicate their lives to public service. And I appreciate everything that our elected officials do. But I cannot support the misuse of power of government. I hope that you considered this repeal as an opportunity to provide a written and public apology to all of our elected officials who cre it created chaos in each office unbelievably. Thank you. I think my 60 minutes are up. Yes, they are. Thank you. Stephen Madcor, was there any chaos in our public uh, officials' offices based on an emergency ordinance that was never, ever put into effect? Uh, not that was reported to me. Thank you. Okay, up next, anybody else in the room willing wanting to testify on this issue? Tony, do you have anybody online? Madam Chair, we do not. Okay. Um, that's the end of our list. Uh, any further comments on this? If not, I will close the public hearing and ask for a motion. I move we read the ordinance 01-0, correction, 01-2023 by title only. Second. Commissioner Scholl has moved ordinance 01-2023, and Commissioner Schrader has seconded that motion. Any further discussion? Seeing none, Tony, would you please take the poll? Commissioner Scholl. Aye. Commissioner Savas. Aye. Commissioner Schrader. Aye. Chair Smith. Aye. Motion passes 4-0. Thank you very much. Uh, Tony, would you read the ordinance by title only? Ordinance 
2023, an ordinance amending Clackamas County Code Chapter 6.03, Emergency Regulations and Declaring an Emergency. Do the commissioners have any proposed changes or amendments to the draft ordinance at this time? No. Okay, I'll entertain a motion. I move we approve ordinance 01-2023, an ordinance amending Clackamas County Code Chapter 6.03, emergency regulations and declaring an emergency. Second. It has been moved by Commissioner Scholl that we move uh, approve ordinance 01-23. Commissioner Schrader has second that. Any further discussion? Uh, yes, Chair, just yes. briefly. Um, I just want to just um, take us back to the meeting um, in which, our business meeting in which um, we had uh, uh, two of our elected officials, or three maybe, um, our treasurer and our tax assessor um, who came and testified about this. And I remember their upset and um, it, their upset resonated with me. I just want to acknowledge that, you know, this is a, a, a remedy of sorts, but I think it did um, indeed um, impact to some degree, um, you know, a number of us uh, during this time. I think trust is something that is hard to um, have um, acquire, retain, um, and um, it's, it, it's sometimes those things, things like this sometimes do damage that just takes a long time to, to remedy. So I think this is the beginning and I think we need to do things in a, such a way that uh, we try to restore that as a body of five. Uh, you know, I was in opposition to this in the beginning, um, you know, as far as not this repeal, but the, uh, the changes in the beginning. Um, so I, I, I I'm glad that we are repealing this, and um, but the same token is my concern is that again that we somehow find a way to go out of our way to remedy and to build trust in the future with our I other with our other colleagues, or elected officials. Thank you for your comments. I think we have done that by repealing this motion. As I explained to all elected officials and anybody who was paying attention, this was not intended for all public elected officials. It was directed at the clerk and the handling of elections. And it was very obvious moving forward, trying to manage the process, that there were huge issues in the clerk's office. I will always say that. Um, the, if the assessor, I have talked to both the assessor and the treasurer, and I do believe that we are on solid ground in a relationship moving forward to making sure their offices are performing well, the common good. And you know, commissioners, I'll say this. You know, the buck stops here at this dais. And we are the authority of the Clackamas County. And sometimes we make decisions based on the moment in time. And I do believe the decision was correct at that moment in time. However, that moment in time has passed. We're on to a new day. We're gonna do great things for Clackamas County. Thank you very much. Gary, what's next? Uh, I haven't voted yet, have you? Did you vote on the second motion? No, okay. Oh, we need to vote. Yes, please. Tony, call the poll. Commissioner Schrader. Aye. Commissioner Savas. Aye. Commissioner Scholl. Aye. Chair Smith. Aye. Motion passes for zero. Stephen Magcor. Chair, if you would allow me, I would like to answer the question that Commissioner Savas had about the Housing Authority earlier in this meeting. Oh, yes, go ahead, please. So what this board has is a fixed quorum requirement. You have five members, and you to move anything forward, you have to have three to vote in favor of it. The Housing Authority, by state law, ORS Chapter 456103, has a floating quorum requirement. So it's going to be the majority of those commissioners present at the time. So if five commissioners on the Housing Authority are present, because you have six, if five are present, three can carry an item forward. Okay. Yes. So not four, three. So if there's three commissioners present for the housing authority. Um, a positive vote can't be two. It's got to. That be would not be a quorum of the housing authority, though. You have to have four. You have six for the housing authority. You wouldn't be able to meet as a housing authority without four being present, right? Okay, well, yep. okay, so there's yep. a quorum issue that requires four. Correct. And also the voting issue, which is, you're saying is a, is a floating. Correct. 
Okay. Yep. Three could carry the day for the Housing Authority, provided you had a quorum of those so, present. So my initial concern does not necessarily apply to the vote, but it applies to actually being able to meet. So it is four. It's four to have a quorum. Yeah. And we can't meet without unless we have a quorum. Correct. Okay. Yep. Well, we'll just have to make sure that uh, when this comes up, we have a quorum, yep. which would be four. Chair, this might be an appropriate time to, um, I didn't expect the response so fast. Thank you, Mr. Madcor, for your timely response. But I think it's also, maybe we ought to have a discussion about, um, you know, again, I was made aware this morning about how much time off that we're gonna be, we're not gonna have a f the full five of us, and yet we have a lot of work sessions and work to do. So I, I'd love to get some kind of a spreadsheet or a calendar <clears throat> and make sure we're all aware of the impacts of that. Um, I, you know, I'm prepared to cancel a trip if necessary, um, you know, a county trip, not a personal trip, but a, a county trip if it means we, uh, it's going to be more, if, it, if it's critical to getting our work done. We have that scheduled to come up um, uh, the week after next because not all commissioners will be present next week and all commissioners need to be present to have a conversation about being present. <laughs> that, yeah, that's, that's the ridiculousness of this. <laughs> Thank you very much. Now, travel is quite beneficial. And there's a couple of commissioners on this need to travel that we need to go out and see different ways of doing business. We can't be so pigeonholed that just that we only listen to our own staff, that we only take the advice of our own staff, because there are better ways in the world of doing some of these overarching huge policy decisions. We do need to get that information, okay? So in trying to set the agenda from now till the end of the fiscal year, June 30th, we have really accomplished a lot of the policy sessions, the initial the initial policy sessions. I'm not saying we're necessarily going to arrive at these decisions. So, and that's what we're trying to manage going forward. Um, and Martha, you're fond of saying that long ago that the board went to a five-member commission in K instead of a three-member because um, of the quorum issues. Well, now we're running into that again with a five-member commission. And um, we were going to be having, in a week and a half from now, um, a come unto Jesus. Yeehaw. Gary, what's up next? All right, next is the consent agenda. Tony, would you please read the consent agenda? Clackamas County consent agenda. Elected officials, item one, approval of previous business meeting minutes for the Board of County Commissioners. Item two, approval of a board order authorizing issuance of a purchase order to Axon Enterprise Incorporated for the Justice Premier software system under a cooperative contract. Purchase order value is $650,190 for five years. Funding is through budgeted county general funds for the district attorney's office. County administration item one, approval of a subrecipient agreement with Mercy Corps for American Rescue Plan Act capacity building recovery assistance. Agreement value is $1. $1.25 million for 19 months, funding through county allocated American Rescue Plan Act funds. No county general funds are involved. Juvenile, item one, approval of amendment two, adding funding and extending duration of the intergovernmental agreement with Oregon Health Authority for behavioral rehabilitation services reimbursements. Amendment value is approximately $4,000 in 1.5 years. Agreement value is now $73,452.60 for 3.5 years. Funding is through the Oregon Health Authority. No county general funds are involved. Transportation and Development, Item 1, approval of the resolution declaring the, the public necessity and purpose for acquisition of rights of way, easements, and fee property, and authorizing good faith negotiations and condemnation actions for the Southeast Johnson Creek Boulevard from 79th Place to 82nd Avenue project. Project value is $2,856,705. Funding through Community Road Fund, Development Agency, Federal Funds, and House Bill 2017. No county general funds are involved. Item two, approval of amendment three to a supplemental project agreement with the Oregon Department of Transportation for the Canby Ferry Intelligent Transportation System project. 
amendment value is $268,913.77. Pro project value is increased to $1,039,278.77. Funding through ferry boat discretionary program matched by county road funds. No county general funds are involved. Item three, approval of the annual intergovernmental agreement with Metro to implement the fiscal year 2022-2023 annual waste reduction and recycle at work program plan. Total revenue is $685,495 for fiscal year 2022-2023. Funding through the regional system fees collected on tons of waste disposed in the Metro Service District. No county general funds are involved. Item four, approval of a contract with Harper, Half, Peterson, Regalis for the Southeast 172nd Avenue Improvements Project. Con total contract value is $6,322,672.07 for 4.5 years. Funding through the City, County, Transportation System Development Charges, Joint District Fund, Cash Acknowledgement Funds, and City of Happy Valley Funds. No County General Funds are involved. Health, Housing, Human Services, Item 1. Approval of a local subrecipient grant agreement with Rice SD Benistar for the education and outreach to the Latino, Latina, and Latinx community for the Commercial Tobacco Prevention Community Grant. Grant value is $20,000 for six months. Funding is through the Oregon Health Authority. No county general funds are involved. Item two, approval of a local subrecipient grant agreement with Data International for education and outreach to the Latino, Latina, Latinx community for the commercial tobacco prevention community grant. Total va grant value is $20,000 for six months. Funding through the Oregon Health Authority. No county general funds are involved. Item three, Approval of a local subrecipient grant agreement with Northwest Family Services for education and outreach to migrant farm workers for the Commercial Tobacco Prevention Community Grant. Grant value is $20,000 for six months. Funding through the Oregon Health Authority. No county general funds are involved. Item four, approval of a local subrecipient grant agreement with Port Redland Refugee Support Group for education and outreach to F refugees for the Commercial Tobacco Prevention Community Grant. Grant value is $20,000 for six months. Funding through the Oregon Health Authority. No county general funds are involved. Item five, approval of a local subrecipient grant agreement with the Korean Society of Oregon for education and outreach to the Korean community for the Com Commercial Tobacco Prevention Community Grant. Grant value is $20,000 for six months. Funding through the Oregon Health Authority. No county general funds are involved. Item six, approval of a local subrecipient grant agreement with Centro Cultural de Condado for education and outreach to the Latino, Latina, Latinx community for the commercial Tobacco Prevention Community Grant. Grant value is $20,000 for six months. Funding through the Oregon Health Authority. No county general funds are involved. Item seven, approval of a local subrecipient grant agreement with the Oregon Chinese Coalition for Education and Outreach to the Chinese American Community for the Commercial Tobacco Prevention Community Grant. Total grant value, $20,000 for six months. Funding through the Oregon Health Authority. No county general funds are involved. Item eight, Approval of a local subrecipient grant agreement with, with, according to his word, outreach for education and outreach to the black and African American communities for the Commercial Tobacco Prevention Community Grant. Grant value $20,000 for six months. Funding through the Oregon Health Authority. No county general funds are involved. Item nine, approval of a services agreement with Ride Connection for transportation services to disabled or elderly Clackamas County residents provided by volunteer drivers through the Ride Together program. Agreement value is $4,182 for one year. Funding is through TriMet and Federal Transit Administration 5310 funding. No county general funds are involved. Item 10, approval of a services agreement with Ride Connection for transportation services to disabled or elderly Clackamas County residents provided by community centers and transportation reaching people. Agreement value is $206,670 for one year. Funding is through TriMet and Federal Transit Administration 5310 funding. No county general funds are involved. Item 11, approval of a services agreement with Ride Connection for transportation services to disabled or elderly veterans provided by volunteer drivers who are also veterans. Agreement value is $5,047 for one year. $5,047 for one year. Funding is through TriMet and Federal Transit Administration 5310 funding. No county general funds are involved. Item 12, approval of Amendment 2 with Malala Hope Incorporated for increasing funding and changing the scope of work of a non-federal sub-recipient grant to provide services during extreme weather conditions. Amendment value is $122,210. Grant value is increased to $173,150 for one year. Funding through Oregon Housing and Community Services and $4,644 in budgeted county general funds. 
Item 13, approval of Amendment 1, increasing funding of a subrecipient grant with Clackamas Community, Clackamas County Children's Commission for Healthy Family Home Visitors. Amendment value is $132,438.60. Agreement value is increased to $2,111,302.60 for two years. Funding through the Oregon Department of Education. No county general funds are involved. Item 14, approval of a revenue grant award from the Business Devel Oregon Business Development Department for Child Care Scholarships. Grant value is $250,000 for one year. Funding through Oregon State Business Development Department. No county general funds are involved. Item 15, approval to submit final home American Rescue Plan Act allocation plan. Grant value is $3,649,508 for 10 years. Funding through a federal home grant. No county general funds are involved. Item 16, approval of a federal subrecipient agreement with the Clackamas County Circuit Court to provide a court clerk to assist with restraining orders at a safe place family justice center. Grant value is $246,251 for two years and nine months. Funding is through the U.S. Department of Justice. Office on Violence Against Women, Fiscal Year 2022, Improving Criminal Justice Response Grant. No county general funds are involved. Item 17, approval of Amendment 1, increasing funding and duration of an intergovernmental agreement with the Oregon Health Authority for Choice Model Services. Amendment value is $423,946.50 for six months. Agreement value is increased to $1,271,839.49 for 1.5 years. Funding through the Oregon Health Authority. No county general funds are involved. Item 18, approval of a non-federal subrecipient agreement with Cascade AIDS Project Blueprint grant for translation services. Grant value is $25,000 for six months. Funding is, for, is from budgeted county general funds allocated for blue pin grants. Madam Chair, that concludes the list. Thank you, Tony, a very long list, that's good. Does any commissioner wish to remove anything from the consent agenda? Seeing none, I will entertain a motion. I move we approve the consent agenda. Seconded. Commissioner Schrader has moved for approval of the consent agenda and Commissioner Scholl has seconded that. Any further discussion? Seeing none, Tony, please take the poll. Commissioner Savas. Aye. Commissioner Scholl. Aye. Commissioner Schrader. Aye. Chair Smith. Aye. Motion passes 4 0. Gary, what's next? Uh, next is Water Environment Services, if you would please convene as that board. I will recess as the Board of County Commissioners and convene as a Water yeah. Environment Services. This is the consent agenda for Water Environment Services. Tony, would you please read the consent agenda? Water Environment Services, one item, approval of an intergovernmental agreement with the City of Milwaukee for the Kellogg Good Neighbor Program. Agreement value is approximately $920,000 for 4.5 years. Funding through Water Environment Services, Sanitary Sewer Operating Funds. No county general funds are involved. Does any commissioner wish to remove anything off the West consent agenda? Seeing none, I'll entertain a motion. I move for approval of the Water Environment Services Consent Agenda. Second. Commissioner Scholl has moved for approval of the Water Environment Services Consent Agenda and Commissioner Schrader has second that. Any further discussion? Seeing none, Tony, please take the poll. Commissioner Schrader. Aye. Commissioner Savas. Aye. Commissioner Scholl. Aye. Chair Smith. Aye, motion passes 4-0. Gary, what's next? Next is the Development Agency, if you would please convene as that board. I will now adjourn as a Water Environment Services Board and convene as a Development Agency Board of Directors. This is the consent agenda for the Development Agency. Tony, would you please read the consent agenda? Development Agency, item one, approval of a resolution acknowledging financial statement findings of a material weakness in internal control over compliance for fiscal year 2022 and describing corrective action in accordance with Oregon Revised Statute 297.466, no fiscal impact, no county general funds are involved. Item two, approval of a bill of sale to Clackamas River Water for the conveyance of a new water main extension completed as part of the D Street Road project. Asset value is $287,435.54.
no funding involved, conveyance of improvements, no county general funds are involved. Item three, approval of a conveyance of public sanitary sewer main extension to water environment services conveying a new sewer main extension that was completed as part of the D Street Road project. Total asset value is $110,863. No funding involved, conveying of improvements. No <coughs> county general funds are involved. Madam Chair, that concludes the list. Thank you very much. Does any commissioner wish to remove anything off the consent agenda or is there any discussion? Seeing none, Tony, would I'll entertain a motion. I move for approval of the development agency consent agenda. Second. Commissioner Scholl has moved for approval of the development agency consent agenda, and Commissioner Schrader has second that. Uh, any further discussion? Nope. Tony, please take the poll. Director Schrader. Aye. Director Scholl. Aye. Director Savas. Aye. Chair Smith. Aye, motion passes 4-0. Thank you very much. I will now adjourn as a development agency board and reconvene as a board of county commissioners. Gary, what's next? Next is public communication, Chair Smith. Up next is public communication. All those out there that want to come up and talk, we do have one card. Les Poole, please come forward. Restate your name and area of residence, and you have three minutes. Well, you can take longer. I mean, there's nobody here, so... Well, good morning, Chair and Commissioners, staff as well. Um, and the reason I mention staff is that the famous words come to mind, we're all in this together. And what we're all in together is the tolling fiasco. And I want to comment about transportation and tolling and clarify some things and, and make a very small ask of the Commission. Um, I would hope we'd see more and more public involvement and awareness. It's really out there now what's going on. And if possible, another uh, some type of a town hall or a Zoom type town hall, uh, I think would really help. Um, we're going to have a lot of folks show up to talk about it. And uh, I think you're going to see a unified voice uh, from the public based on polling and, and certainly a, a number of factors. Um, if that arises, I would make a request that while we need to sometimes limit time for speakers, that a two-minute minimum or a two-minute time allowance, um, no less than 90 seconds, be allotted for future speakers. You just can't get it done in a minute. And uh, when folks come down here, sometimes they need to move right along with their speaking, uh, but narrowing it down to one minute it just doesn't allow them the opportunity to really be heard. A couple things about HB 2017, if I could. That was over $5 billion. I testified during the hearings in Salem on that issue. I would love to have you watch the video of my testimony and the responses that I got. I challenged ODOT's credibility. I requested that there be accountability for some of the things that were being planned and for what had failed in the past. I was reassured of a lot of things, none of which have happened. HP 2017 authorized about 300 million for ODOT's regular maintenance budget. It also authorized hundreds of millions for improvements. And the final form of that bill was, the, the amount was reduced by the elimination of funding to widen and address the 205 corridor in, Sta in Stafford. Um, the Rose Quarter project was funded as was some expansion on Highway 217. The Rose Quarter project includes capping the freeway in a big redevelopment plan for Portland that's great, isn't going to do a thing to help traffic. The Rose Quarter project is now $400 million over budget. And frankly, the money to widen 205 is out there. Um, a couple of quick thoughts, if I could. I'm about out of time here, but I'd appreciate being able to just explain some things about that I understand. And I'm open to correction. HB 2017 authorized a two-year study of tolling. 
It didn't authorize anything else. Now that study means that a, a section of the area intended to be told will be included in the initial pilot project. So we're, there's a lot of confusion about what area will be told. The truth is they want to toll the entire metro area. But right now, the test project for two years, of course, includes uh, the mess, I'll call it, at Stanford, at, at Stafford. That project, at the conclusion, would allow ODOT to appeal to the Federal Highway Administration to make tolling and congestion pricing permanent. At this time, the only way that the federal government is uh, approving tolling is for payment of a project, expansion. So while there's some expansion that could be covered by tolling on, let's say, the I-205 Abernathy Bridge, the earthquake improvements and other improvements can't be paid for with tolling at this time. Uh, I'll conclude by saying that there's a petition to require a public vote. If that petition makes the November 2024 ballot and is approved by the voters, it would require a public vote before permanent, permanent uh, permanency uh, will occur with tolling. Um, the last thing I'll say is that um, ODOT's been very disingenuous with us, and uh, I'll certainly be submitting some written testimony for you folks to review. Uh, when I was at the HB 2017 hearing where it was authorized under, in the bill under the description as value pricing, I can assure you that almost no one in that room, including myself, had any idea what they were talking about. So uh, I, I appreciate any efforts that you can continue on to bring this issue to the public. And I would request that, that the commission um, issue a statement or endorsement or support a public vote on this turkey. Thank you for your time as always. Thank you. Is there anyone else in the room who would like to testify? Uh, if so, come forward, Commissioner Savas. Yeah, I just uh, appreciate Mr. Poole's uh, testimony and the history on HB 2017. I would encourage Mr. Poole to go back and look at HB 3055, which, which is more relevant today than HB 2017, and I think uh, really adds a lot more context into why we are where we are today. Um, less so about HB 2017 to where we are today as, as again, because of HB 3055. So please uh, factor that into your... Um, thinking uh, how we got where we, are, where we are and what HB 3055 says. It's really the cement and the glue that bonds everything together, unfortunately. I'm also not opposed to conducting yet another town hall on tolling and transportation. However, to what end? Uh, yes, I'm very much concerned, but as the Board of County Commissioners, what is our authority to stop tolling? And that's a question we're asking and getting an opinion on, opinion on. I also don't want to raise expectations of the public and have them think that we can do something that we are barred from doing by law. So, Les, I appreciate your comments as well. We will consider this moving forward as we continue to uh, strategize on the tolling issue. Tony, is there anything else? Anyone? Oh, excuse me, Commissioner Scholl. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Poole, I would like to get a link to your HB 2017 testimony, if I could, please. And I'd like to publicly thank Mr. Poole for his enduring advocacy and energy for protecting the families and the businesses of this state of Oregon. Thank you, Mr. Poole. Thank you. Tony, anyone online? No, Madam Chair. Okay. Uh, well, that is, uh, I'll now close the public communication portion of the meeting and move on. Gary, what's next? Next is county administrator update. That's me. I want to start with some business for you, commissioners. Yesterday at your issues discussion, you agreed to send a letter of support to the city of Malala 
for their request of federal funding for their wastewater treatment plant. The letter is completed. You received a copy of the letter yesterday in your email. It is also posted online. Just so we're following your protocol, we wanna, I'm seeking a motion to approve that letter. It's, it's the base boilerplate we write for all letters, but if you have any feedback, either tell me or would you please make a motion to approve the letter? Move Mark. for approval. Second. Commissioner Savas has moved for approval of the letter for the city of Malala to apply for federal funds for their wastewater treatment plant. Commissioner Schrader has second that motion. Any further discussion? Seeing none, Tony, please take the poll. Commissioner Scholl. Aye. Commissioner Schrader. Aye. Commissioner Savas. Aye. Chair Smith. Aye. Motion passes. 4-0. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioners. Appreciate that. If I may, the rest of my report, just some quick good news. I want to recognize um, the good work of our county employees. And today I want to thank our employee from our Transportation Maintenance Division of the Department of Transportation and Development, uh, Paul Runyon. He received a note of thanks from a resident in Milwaukee, a resident in Milwaukee who wrote, I would like to acknowledge Transportation Maintenance Supervisor Paul Runyon. We live on a small lake in Oak Grove that empties into the Willamette River through a culvert. The culvert gets blocked with debris, which causes the, lakes, the lake to rise. I've been in contact with Paul Runyon for several years. I call when the culvert is blocked, and he expeditiously clears it. He and his team are always friendly and helpful. They are a big asset for Clackamas County. Thank you. So thank you, Paul, for your outstanding service to the public of Clackamas County. That's my update for today. Thank you, Commissioner. That's excellent. <clears throat> I love hearing comments like that. Very nice. Well, we are now going to move on to public communication. Commissioner Schrader, you're up. Well, colleagues, I have uh, information to hand out to you today. So here you oh. go, Commissioner. Here you go, Commissioner. And um, Ben isn't uh, here right now, but that's okay. I will keep this for him as well. But there's. There's lots of stuff. I have information on the farm reauthorization bill, too, if you'd yes, like to see that. Yes, and, and I do want to read that. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, Is I have, this yours? Uh, yeah. I have two of them here, and maybe we could pass it around to the rest of our commissioners. Okay. That's kind of an important piece of information. Um, I'll try and get more copies of that, actually. I may have a few more in my office. Commissioner Scholl saw me being a librarian yesterday, uh -huh. putting piles of things together. And the reason I did that is I wanted to give you a complete report of the legislative conference at the National Association of Counties. Uh, let me begin by saying that there were 27 of us uh, from the state of Oregon who went to that conference. That included Benton County, me from Clackamas, Columbia County, Klamath County, Deschutes County, Lake County, Lane County, Marion County, Tillamook County, Umatilla, Union County, and Washington County. So we had a cross-section of folks from urban, rural, suburban, and uh, really out there. I have to tell you that some of the counties, Washington County, all commissioners went. Tillamook County, all the commissioners were there. Marion County, um, Kevin, Calm Wills, Danielle Bethel, they were there. Lane included uh, Heather and Pat Farr, a lake, County, which is in that two folks, Barry Schallenberger and James Williams, those are our very rural counties. And Klamath County had Derek DeGroote and Kelly Minty, and Columbia uh, had Casey Garrett and Margaret Magruder. So these are all colleagues of ours that we know. We all went there. Uh, they had an opportunity to lobby, uh, I guess, uh, Senator Merkley at the time uh, as a group. And in your packet, you're going to find the Oregon counties make impact in Washington, D.C. You'll see the, uh, actually, the uh, press release that the association put out talking about what we've done. However, the most important thing I wanted to talk to you about today, I gave you, I have emailed all of you, um, as I work with community economic and workforce development, I get Friday updates, and I've been making an attempt to forward those to you as soon as I get them. And this one is particularly interesting because it really gives you a complete update 
of what happened at our CEWD Policy Steering Committee. We heard from Michaela Bodie, Senior Professional Staff Member on the Senate Agriculture, Nutrition, and Forestry Committee. We were briefed um, on the overview of the Rural Development Title of the Farm Bill. And that's the one issue in this particular document with the reauthorization that we need to look at, particularly because we just approved um, helping Malala out. Uh, we, uh, they have a Rural Development Program under this that we need to make sure stays intact because that's how we get the dollars to our smaller cities and rural communities for the infrastructure that they need for water, uh, for sewer, uh, and actually roads. There's, the USDA has all kinds of rural development programs. And uh, I hope as we move forward with our new economic development person on board, Laura Edmonds, that we take a closer look at those opportunities because I think our rural communities could really benefit from that. And then there is a whole list of other people, so I really don't want to belabor every single one. I wanted to highlight the farm bill today because that is directly going to aff uh, affect us. Um, we heard from the Economic Development Administration, the Director of Intergovernmental Affairs at the U.S. Department of Labor on DOL's policy and priorities that ensures all workers have access to good jobs. And that's important for our workforce board and uh, for the work we do here in the county because, again, it's accessing Department of Labor dollars so we can get people trained up, skilled up, and out in the workforce. So that's an important connection. Um, Marion McFadden uh, from HUD, U.S. De De Department of Housing and Urban Development. Okay, this is the really key agency that we get our federal dollars, and you'll see this as we go through our, um, um, our agendas every week with human resources. You'll see a lot of uh, those are federal human H HUD dollars that actually funneled money directly to us for our housing uh, agenda that we're moving here on the program. So I was able to get an update on that. And then um, finally, uh, Jacob Liebenloft, counselor to the Secretary of the U.S. Department of Treasury, and he briefed us on the implementation of the American Rescue Plan. And um, Mary Keating, uh, the Director of Community Services for DuPage County, Illinois, and National Association for County and Community Economic Development, uh, representative to the NACO board and myself, Martha Schrader, we discussed, uh, we were a panel, and we discussed how county staff and elected officials can work together when administering federally funded affordable housing, community development, economic development grants. So that was the gist of what that committee did. And on this sheet, and I sent it to you electronically, you can tag any part of this and pull up the information uh, directly from that. And also the other thing that um, uh, Michael does, who is uh, the the person who helps me together with Christine as we move forward this, uh, there is a whole bunch of information that you can access about um, Thriving Communities Network and uh, all kinds of articles that what I'm reading uh, as well that Michael will put together. Uh, this is particularly with resources and reports, housing, economic development and workforce. So he gives us all a complete overview of what's happening and it's information we can use to be more efficient and get the funding that we need. Um, one of the things I'm, I'm, I don't want to, I don't like to um, say this, but this was a real opportunity. Um, actually, NACO put me in one of their magazines here. Yes, I saw yeah, that. yeah, yeah, and this was federal policy priorities and it was because I was there and they were meeting with Senator Merkley. These were other commissioners across the Western Interstate region. And what we were lobbying for was county support maintaining long-term full funding for the payment in lieu of PILT, uh, payment in lieu of taxes program. This compensates public lands counties, which we are one, for untaxable federal land. Without predictable mandatory funding, PLT, PILT will remain a discretionary program subject to the annual appropriations process. 
And we urge the administration and members of Congress to support long-term predictable full funding for PILT in fiscal year 2024 and modifying this program to make PILT payments to counties with smaller populations more equitable. We also supported secure rural schools as a transitional funding mechanism until the, um, the, the, until the government can really recompensate us for the fact that not just our county, which has at least 51 percent of our, uh, of our land mass under federal auspice, which means we don't get a tax base for it, but other counties as well, that we get that money for reimbursement. And it's very important. There's a fly-in every year, which I don't go to, quite frankly. I don't have time for that. But they're constantly meeting with our two, uh, particularly our two legislators, Merkley and Wyden, are pretty powerful at this point. They've been around a while, but particularly Wyden, so he is able to help continue making sure that our county, as well as these other counties, get the money we deserve for having the federal government really literally uh, own over 50% of our land mass here in the county. So just wanted to let you know, and then... Um, I will tell you that I have more materials than I, than I could bring today, um, but I will be hopefully bringing something every week uh, that I can share with you about uh, how we can access these dollars and how we can work together with the rest of our Association of Oregon County colleagues to make sure that Oregon gets its fair share of federal dollars. Um, the other thing I gave you is a, a calendar <laughs> that I picked up and it says, I love my county because, and this is actually a, a, something that they did with, uh, with our Americans for the Arts group, and it's uh, pictures that children did from all around the counties in the United States, and so I thought it was rather charming. So uh, it's from North Carolina, uh, Niagara County, you name it, this county's in here, but I thought it might be something pleasant and fun for you to have for your office. So that's it. Chair Smith. Okay. Any questions? Thank Anybody? you, Commissioner Schrader. Is that all? That's it. Okay. <laughs> oh, I have more, but we'll wait till next week. Oh, well, yeah. Conti <laughs> continue with the briefings. I like hearing about this. Thank you very much. Commissioner Savas, you're up. Yeah. Uh, as we discussed yesterday, uh, when our transportation staff were up here um, getting a lot of, um, doing a lot of work, our staff are doing a lot of work. All transportation staff are doing a lot of work right now. The issue for everyone right now is the NEPA study as it relates to the tolling, uh, one segment of the tolling project. Um, it's over 2,000 pages of technical data. Um, so I would encourage anyone who's interested in tolling um, to take a look at that. It's not, you know, f you need to find what you can absorb. There's a lot there. There's probably some people out there that are capable of uh, reading it and absorbing it and understanding all of it. Um, I think it's challenging for one person, including myself, to, to do that. So I'm going to be doing the best I can. I know our staff are as well. And right now, the questions and the phone calls and, and inquiries I'm getting are really about my interpretation of the NEPA. <laughs> and I, I, I think we're all, all of our staff who do this every day are really coming through it right now. So uh, Mr. Poole, um, you know, happy to send you the link of the NEPA study and let you uh, tackle that. But that's, that's the issue on tolling right now. Um, that's our opportunity to get in, get in front of it. I really believe that if there is indeed some um, missteps or oversights um, in the NEPA analysis, I think that gives us an opportunity to make them go back and do a further analysis and do a full EIS uh, if indeed um, what my my initial interpretation is that it's it fell short of the full environmental impact um, so that's our work uh, I did want to say that a little bit that at our recent retreat we had here a few weeks ago that uh, we knew we had a lot of work to do and we certainly didn't, didn't get through all of it but um, again somewhat of my disappointment uh, today was learning that um, <clears throat> there might be a while before we actually follow up, because we agreed to, for a sec for a retreat to discuss all the things that we, I anticipate us discussing, which we really didn't get to, <clears throat> but I'm not sure if that's possible uh, until l later this year, if indeed there's going to be that many absences between now and then. Uh, we have so much work to do. We have so many crises here at home that, um, and so many things happening in the state legislature. It, it seems to me that there's a, it's a time now for all hands on deck 
to, to deal with the crisis at hand, which is obviously this homeless issue um, and the treatment needed and everything else. So, you know, our legislative agenda, our state agenda um, has to be honed in and focused on that. We've got this transportation stuff. Um, there are urgent needs right now, and we are overwhelmed, understaffed, and in my opinion, unfortunately, not as prepared as we should be. So I will, unfortunately, cannot follow Commissioner Schrader on some of the rosy things that are happening. I would like to, <laughs> but um, there's a lot of work ahead of us, and I'm very, very worried that we're not gonna be very prepared, um, and we're not gonna be all hands on deck. Thank you, Commissioner Savitz. Commissioner Shaw, you're up. Yes, thank you and good morning. Uh, I'd like to share with you the meeting liaisons I've done in the last week. 15 February, Fair Board. Fair Board is proceeding on their plans to begin construction on the new barn right after the fair this year. The fair will be 14 through 19 August. Uh, Brian Crow, Executive Director of the Fair and Rodeo, is confident that they'll make up the shortfall of funds, and so we look forward to a new barn uh, for the fair come next year. On 21 February, the Clackamas County Parks Advisory Board met, and one of the highlights from the meeting was they worked on ideas for new revenue and funding uh, in anticipation for some general fund reductions in the 23-24 budget. They're very responsible in taking action on that. On 22 February, I attended the Metro Policy Advisory Committee meeting. It was a meeting for new members to impact, it just gave an impact overview, urban growth management uh, decision for 2024 overview, and of course, an update on the River Terrace 2.0 UGB exchange. On 23 February, I attended the 82nd Avenue Transit High Capacity uh, transit project uh, committee. Um, that committee is charged with oversight on a metro project for 82nd Avenue. 82nd Avenue is TriMet's largest, uh, mo busiest uh, transit line. And one of the concerns I have from that meeting is they're already talking about the potential for removing uh, vehicular lanes uh, and having bus only lanes. That's a concern. I brought up the fact that most of the trips originating from Clackamas County are in cars and trucks or business vehicles. So that's a big concern. I'll continue to uh, advocate uh, for Clackamas County in that committee in the coming years. Um, then on the 24th of February, uh, the Council on Forest Trust Lands met. Now this council is uh, concerned with the oversight of Oregon Department of Forestry Managed Lands. Uh, ODF manages 745,000 acres of forest lands across the state, but here in Clackamas County, we only have 10,000 acres of ODF managed land. So uh, Senate Bill 795, which if passed would transfer the management of those ODF managed lands back to the counties, is a big deal for some of our neighbors who have 10 times as many acres of ODF land. But we're still concerned about harvest levels. Uh, we know also as the uh, state habitat conservation plan area potentially is expanded, that means harvest is reduced. And harvest reductions means less jobs for our people in our forest communities. So that's an update from the last week Thank you very much. Thank you, Commissioner Schultz. All of us are busy doing all the work that comes our way, that it's presented to us, and sometimes uh, unintended work schedules, unintended issues come on the work schedules that kind of derails us. And I think maybe you're seeing and hearing some of that frustration of going forward on real solid policy initiatives. But that's the way of serving uh, in a public elected official capacity. We don't always know what's coming our way. We deal with issues as we can. 
Um, I had an opportunity to speak on Tuesday on the affordable housing at the Oregon City Business Association where all commissioners were uh, in present uh, attendance was also uh, an attorney who deals on land use, uh, a metro representative and a representative from the Home Builders Association and myself. We all had different points of view on why housing costs so much money in this state. Little main uh, area is way back when, when Senate Bill was 100 was passed, it severely restricted private ownership's ability to do really what they wanted to, restricted government's ability to expand under the auspices of um, uh, urban um, spread. So they were considered, they were afraid that cities would go out into all of the uh, farmland and forest land and just take over. Well, what we're seeing now is in recent years, the population of the state of Oregon has doubled and people have found themselves unable to buy an affordable home. And we talk about the expansion of the urban growth boundaries. We talk about this. We talk about all sorts of issues. And last night I testified before the Oregon legislature just on this issue. It's the microchip uh, advisory committee for the siting of microchip facilities in Oregon. You may have heard about the Federal CHIPS Act has billions and billions of dollars authorized to go out to the states and to locate a microchip facility in Oregon. And this was um, got a lot of momentum when Intel announced a year ago they were moving headquarters out of Oregon to Iowa, I believe? Ohio. Ohio. You know, I get those two mixed up. Thank you, Mark. Uh, Ohio. And a lot of jobs are going with that. And so I presented uh, what this board approved on a couple of different locations in, in Clackamas County. And to the legislature's surprise, this task force that was assembled of, of um, private and elected officials realized, oh, we have no 500-acre site in the state of Oregon that can facilitate a building or a company like this. The legislators didn't even know that. And I said, well, duh, we've been dealing with this forever. And so we're trying to move forward on that. Uh, and they want readiness land. But the problem with using terms like readiness land, when you are in Clackamas County and the metro regional government has said, you cannot do what you want with your land. You cannot plan for jobs land. You cannot plan for affordable housing because you have to come before the great metro board and bow down and ask for permission. And even when we do that, it doesn't work. Well, what has happened most recently is Tiger wants 500 acres of buildable land. Somehow they got organized with the builder, but they didn't have the authorization to do that because they didn't have enough acres within their urban growth boundary in their urban reserves. But guess what? Clackamas County does. We have 10,000 acres out in Damascus that will never be buildable for very various reasons that is designated as urban reserves. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take 500 acres out of Damascus and Clackamas County, and we're gonna give it to Washington County, right? Okay, fine, what do we get in return? Fine, let us designate our own 500 acres for housing, makes sense, right? And if you're not gonna let us designate, compensate us. Metro says, nah. Basically, it's the finger. Clackamas County, we're giving you the finger. We don't really care. Well, guess what? Citizens of Clackamas County care. Citizens of Clackamas County would like to be able to go to work 30 minutes from their homes. They would like an affordable house. They would like their children, who will now become professionals in their mid-20s with double incomes, to be able to afford a house, and that is not possible. So you're going to see this board moving forward on this issue because we're done. We are so done with being dictated to either by the legislature or by the metro regional government. So much on that. 
I met with our tri-county chairs on Monday night. Uh, we now meet every two weeks, and it's a good opportunity for me to listen to the chairs in the other two counties, and then for, we both change, exchange ideas really on common problems. We have a, <laughs> be surprising how much we have in common regarding our county governments, and it's always a good opportunity. I always learn. I take counsel from them. It's good, and I give counsel as well. Uh, if you've had an opportunity to look behind here at the courthouse construction, I walked out behind our finance department and looked down and saw the construction, and I counted 15 different types of pieces of equipment or trucks moving in and out all at the same time performing dis diff different tasks, and it was wonderful. We're still at the ground level. But Commissioner Schrader and I met this week with a Judge Steele to plan art for the courthouse. And we're doing it now because we're in the design phase on the blueprints and we may need certain lighting, we may need spaces for that. But rest assured, taxpayer money will not be spent on art. We will have it donated or we will set up fundraising opportunities that people can donate for art in the courthouse. And it is important very important. And so we got a lot accomplished. Uh, we uh, set up a committee of interested people who are all excited about doing it. We decided on different uh, mediums of art that we would like, having different groups represented. And I think it's going to be a lot of fun. And you and I enjoyed that thoroughly. Fun. Yeah, it's one of the it's fun things that we get to yeah. do. Uh, that's all for me today. Hearing no further business before this commission, we are adjourned. <laughs>